In this video we're going to be looking at a coal-fired power station. I am gonna show you the various parts of a coal-fired power station, its function, and how it work together to produce electricity. By the end of the video you'll get a basic idea of a coal power station. We'll cover the fuel system, the water system, the steam system, the electrical system and also the exhaust gas system as well. So, let's get started with an overview of a power station. The first thing we're going to need when we build a coal-fired power station is coal. The idea is that we burn fuel to release chemical energy. That we can use to heat up water and create steam. Every coal power station comprises of a coal dome or coal yard or generally just a storage area where thousands and thousands of tons of coal is stored. According to the requirement, coal is to be fed to the power station via a coal reclaimer. Coal reclaimer is a machine which picks coal from the coal pile and feed to the power station via a conveyor. The conveyor of reclaimer feed this coal to a massive vessel called silo and will feed the coal from the day silo to a coal pulverizer. The idea of the pulverizer is that we can pulverize the coal in order to get very fine coal dust. Inside the pulverizer, we're also going to dry the coal out using air, in fact, primary air from a force draft fan. We're gonna take this air from a preheater so that the area is quite hot and then we'll force it into the pulverizer. And as the coal is ground up into small molecules, it will also dry it out using this air. We use the same air for combustion because it's gonna get blown into the boiler along with the coal. Coal dust is blown pneumatically from the pulverizer to the boiler. Inside the boiler, we're going to ignite that coal and we're going to get combustion. So, that is our fuel system. We may also use oil or natural gas to fire the boiler, at least initially to initiate combustion. It all depends on the design of the boiler itself. The type of boiler we're using is a water tube boiler. Whenever you need a lot of steam at very high pressures, it is advisable to use a water tube boiler. Steam turbines require steam at very high pressures. And that's why we use water tube boilers. Water tube boilers also generate a lot of steam. They're very large. They can be greater than 40, 50, or 60 meters in height. And these are the boilers that power stations in the power generation industry always use. So, let's have a look at our water circuit now because it's the water that gets fed to the boiler in order to generate steam. We've got a makeup water inlet. Makeup water feeds to a deaerator. When we talk about makeup water, we are essentially talking about the water that's added to the system, and then treated before it becomes boiler feed water. You can't just take water from a city grid or from a lake or a river and put it into a water tube boiler. That's not gonna work. You will have a lot of corrosion and a lot of problems. So, this makeup water has to be treated, chemically and mechanically. And we do that quite often in a deaerator. The deaerator is going to reduce the oxygen content and the carbon dioxide content of the water. And before the water gets to the deaerator, it's going to be filtered to take out those particles that might be floating around in the water. Then we'll go to a boiler feed water pump. This is usually a multi-stage centrifugal pump. And we will increase the pressure of our boiler feed water and send it to our water tube boiler. The pressures involved here are actually quite high. The water will be pumped to an economizer. Where we will preheat the water a little bit, before we send it to the main body of the water tube boiler. So, the economizer is a nice way of preheating the water before we send it into the main part of the boiler to really start heating it up a lot more. We don't want to feed cold water into the main part of the boiler or the furnace as we call it. Because if we do that then we're gonna thermal shock the boiler and that could mean that we have cracked pipes. So, we'll preheat it by sending it to the economizer. We'll then send the water around to the furnace. Our water is going to change to steam. It's not gonna be completely dry yet, 
there's gonna be particles of moisture in the steam. That is what we see normally when we think about steam. In the steam drum we'll begin to separate that moisture from the steam. Sometimes using steam separators or steam cyclones. Sometimes using arrangement of baffles. Or a combination of both. We'll then send our steam to a superheater. Where we will really heat that steam up. And although we get a slight pressure drop. We're gonna add more and more heat. And the temperature of the steam is going to increase. We will then feed that steam from our superheaters into a high pressure turbine. As the steam passes through the turbine. It causes the turbine runner to rotate. So, we've taken the chemical energy of the fuel. Turned it into heat, we've heated up the water. We have created high pressure steam. We have fed it to a turbine. And now we are converting that heat energy or heat into mechanical movement or kinetic energy. We're then gonna take the steam out of the high pressure turbine. It's given up a bit of its heat already. But we send it back into the boiler to be reheated. So that we can send it then to an intermediate turbine. The reason we've reheated the steam is simply because we get a slight increase in efficiency. So it's definitely worth doing. But we feed that steam from the reheater in the water tube boiler to an intermediate pressure turbine. The process is the same as for the HP turbine or the high pressure turbine. We allow the steam to flow through the turbine. The turbine rotor rotates and then the steam exits the intermediate pressure turbine and is fed to two low pressure turbines. When we pass the steam through the low pressure turbines, the rotors rotate. And then the steam has effectively fulfilled its purpose. It's given up a lot of heat. The rotating turbines are connected to a generator rotor. The rotor is gonna rotate within a generator stator. And we're gonna generate alternating current. We take our electricity from the generator. We pass it to a transformer. We increase the voltage significantly. Maybe from 20 kV up to 400 kV. And then we send it to an open air switch yard. And then distribute it to a national or international grid. And the best thing for us to do now is to cool the steam, condense it, pump it back through a heater. To the deaerator and then back to the boiler again. So, those are our water and steam circuits. So, we've covered the fuel system. We've covered the water system. We've covered the steam system. You might be wondering how do we cool down so much steam and turn it back into condensate. Well, quite often we will use a cooling tower. In our example here we have a natural draft cooling tower. And essentially the cooling tower has a large reservoir in the base. We suck the water out of the bottom of the reservoir. We send it to a condenser which is a little bit like a shell and tube heat exchanger. And then once we've cooled down that steam, we're going to need to reject the heat in order that we can use our cooling water again. So, we send the heated up or the hot coolant water, to the cooling tower. We'll reject that heat to atmosphere. And then the process continues. The hot cooling water which has been cooled drops down into the reservoir of the tower and is pumped back to the condenser. So now, let's have a look at a few other systems. We've got a secondary air system in which air passes through a preheater and feeds it to the boiler. The primary air system which feeds to the coal pulverizer and then to the water tube boiler which is also preheated. The difference between the two systems is that, the primary air system is added prior to combustion occurring. It controls the rate of combustion. If we add more fuel then we need to add more air. The secondary air system controls how efficiently combustion occurs. We can actually sample the exhaust gas system and we can look at things like the oxygen levels or the carbon dioxide levels or the carbon monoxide levels. 
and we can determine then if we need to add more air to the boiler in order to increase our combustion efficiency or not. Large amounts of oxygen indicate that we've added too much air and perhaps not enough fuel. Large amounts of carbon monoxide indicate that we've added not enough air and that combustion efficiency is low, because combustion was not complete. So, we've covered the air systems. Let's have a quick look now at the exhaust gas system. The exhaust gas system is also known as the flue gas system. The exhaust gases will pass through the preheater, and some of the remaining heat from the exhaust gases is used to heat up the air, which is being fed to the boiler. As the exhaust gases pass through an electrostatic precipitator, there it will effectively ionize the exhaust gas stream, so that particles in the flue gas are attracted to large metal plates. These metal plates have a large contact surface area. Particles in the exhaust gas stream such as fly ash will be attracted to these large surfaces. And in this way we can remove them from the exhaust gas stream. Periodically, these large plates will become totally covered by such particles. Then we will simply bang them, in order that the particles fall off the plates and then go to a silo where they can be discharged and disposed. After the electrostatic precipitator or ESP. The exhaust gases pass through an induced draft fan. And then they will flow to a desulfurization gas scrubber. The idea with the scrubber is that we are removing as much of the sulfur dioxide from the gas stream as possible before we discharge the exhaust gas to atmosphere. In order to remove the sulfur from the gas stream, we will usually use lime, limestone, or ammonia. It will absorb some of the sulfur. We may get ammonia sulfate for example and will form something called gypsum, which can then also be sold after flue gas desulfurization or FGD. The exhaust gas is then gonna flow to a stack. It is a large cylindrical steel column, much like a chimney and the exhaust gases will be discharged through it, to atmosphere. Today we have looked into the various parts or stages of a coal power stations, hope the contents are useful to you. Please post your valuable suggestions for improvement. See you back in another video. Thank you.